Here today we got a Sony. It's an XAV 601 BT model. We're going to do a review on it. Before we get into cutting it on and showing you all the functions that it has, I wanted to give you a brief overview of the outside, what all comes with this unit, and what you can expect to see once you get yours, if you get one. So, there's a box, this is a main receiver. Some of your accessories you got a doubled in plastic trim ring very flexible you can actually trim this on down if you want to make it fit a little bit more snugger more better this unit does come with a sleeve which you'll see you can remove if you're just gonna do a standard doubled in ISO mount meaning you would just put the screws on the side and mount it in and use your factory dash as your fascia otherwise they give you two keys like so so you can actually slide them in there and remove the entire stereo now also this unit I want you to see this is detachable look at that we haven't seen this from many manufacturers since JVC stopped it and that's a big selling feature so Sony really got the wraps on that one it's about time they started doing more things like that you also notice that there's a pretty big lack of buttons. This this unit, in my opinion, really gears up for people who use Androids and iPhones. This is a very big selling point. So if you're into that kind of thing, you're going to like what you're going to see, I think. Now, aside from that, we have the standard Sony Bluetooth microphone. Nice little right angle plug so it doesn't take up a whole lot of space when you're doing your install. A visor mount the keys which I showed you to remove from the sleeve full function remote control pretty typical of the Sony lots of buttons and also what's good about it is it has different types of buttons so if you don't want to actually look at it you can actually feel what you need to do which is cool I think that's a good feature it's not like one button looks like all the others over here it's a soft case so when you do take the face off you have a place to put it and also you get this Bible I don't even know how many pages this thing has my goodness I now understand half of this is probably in some language God knows Malaysian Ting Tang Chinese and Turkish and every other thing 72 pages man Wow that's a book so if you're gonna get this and you actually wanna learn every little nook and cranny there's some good reading for you um, once again, there's a front fascia. Now, on here, there's a USB slot, a front USB, but don't be scared. You don't have to plug in your iPod or your Android device and have some ghastly looking wire hanging out of the front, like on some of these units have. If you look back here, you'll see that there's a second one as well. Um, over here, very robust as far as plugs and stuff. This is the stuff that I like to see. Um, they really didn't shink you out on this one. You got your front, your rear, and your mono subwoofer preamp outputs. Over here, auxiliary audio in. Over here, we have auxiliary 2 audio in. The, the VSS, or the speed sensing circuit. And your reverse wire. So if you're going to utilize a camera, that'll make it go quick. Put the, put the uh, camera image on the screen. Over here, standard deal, 16-pin Sony harness, um, everything you'd expect to see, your eight wires for your speakers, ground accessory, 12 volts, green is your parking brake wire. Um, over here, some more stuff. You'll see that there's six more RCAs here. They place them there, which is a good thing because I think most people will actually utilize these. But if you're not using an amplifier, you could actually just go like this. Unplug it and see you later, Shelly. But over here on these six, you have one for your camera. Um, you have your rear video slave output. You also have a plug up there for your second USB, which could be Android or iPhone, um, and your auxiliary video. So, what else can you ask for? Over here, that's for the V200, the Sirius XM all in one, the little compact. Um, Satellite radio tuner, standard antenna input, you have your microphone, and this plug is for the microphone. So that's the back. 
Now let's turn this bad boy on and see what we can do. So I'm going to let this unit just go into demo. While I talk in the background, let you know what's going on with this unit. So this unit is Bluetooth built in. And if you use Pandora, you can use it with an iPhone, of course, an Android, or any BlackBerry device. Now, this thing is also a fully featured DVD receiver. You can plug in an iPod into the front USB for direct control of playback of video and audio files, or use it at the back. Now, Sony has their own proprietary cable, and if you want to know the model, it is an RC-202 IPV. Um, I personally think that you can just go out and get yourself an imported like a CDIU 50V cable, which is the Pioneer's brand. It also fits Kenwood, it fits JVC, it fits just about all of them. And honestly, they all pretty much work the same. It's kind of like an HDMI cable is to a TV, at least in my opinion. I don't notice any difference. I use an imported Ching Chang one on my own JVC stereo that I use in my own car, and uh, I'm happy with it. So don't waste your money buying that if you don't need to. Now this unit will play, of course, MP3 encoded Windows Media Files, AAC, compressed music files. Now this unit has a pretty good EQ, and uh, that's what makes it worthy of, of spending time on the review, because I'm not going to get crazy doing a lot with the mirror link for a couple reasons. One, because it, as of right now, and it's February 6, 2013, it's only compatible with two phones fully supported at this time. According to Sony's website, it should be, in, sometime in, in the first quarter of this year, should be a lot more robust with a lot more different, you know, options for different phones and media files and stuff. But for now, I'm not going to waste your time showing you something that you can't have. But the mirror link, I will talk about just a little bit, just to touch on, because I'm sure that's one of the most interesting things about it. And what, what it basically is, is an amazing thing that I've never seen. Basically, you plug your phone in, and basically what you see on your phone is what you see on your in-dash stereo, which is pretty crazy. And that goes for all, all your apps, all your hands-free stuff, all your Bluetooth stuff, all your GPS, all those little things that you take for granted, all the news, all the... Uh, things that you might want to read or information, news, weather, all that kind of crap. You're going to see all that stuff just like you do on your on your little smartphone screen. You're going to see on this big screen, which is 6.1 inches. And of course, the way that has to work is you have to download the app. Of course, there'll probably be a nominal fee. Um, what it is uh, is no one knows because you know it's not supported fully at this time. So, whenever it is, I'm sure whatever. You know, the app price will be, I'm sure it'll be reasonable, a few bucks. And uh, that's the way you do. You download the app um, on your compatible phone. And uh, you just utilize it right on the stereo. That's, that's all there is to it, man. You can also tie in your steering wheel controls right into the stereo. Um, of course, it has a regular AM FM tuner. It has 18 presets for FM, 6 on AM. There is a built in amp, which is 52 watts peak by four channels, which of course is bogus. Uh, RMS, and that's a CEA, CEA rating, is 17 watts RMS. But if you're going to want to have real clean, loud, vibrant power, of course, buy a real amplifier. And I would imagine most people that do invest in getting this receiver would make the investment into buying a real five channel amp. That's what's really going to make this unit shine. So you got that, you got the Bluetooth, it's also Pandora compatible right out of the box with iPhone, Android, Blackberry phones. Standard double din four inch tall receiver. Comes with this remote control which I showed you before. This will do all the functions that you can do on the screen with the little remote. And the little remote I like, it's nice. The, the buttons are laid out very well. It's not too big, not too small. They got a nice little rubber coating on them. It's it's cool. It's I like it. And of course, this thing will play CDs, DVDs. Um, if you want to use an SD card, you couldn't do it directly, but you can do it indirectly by adding a card reader, and you could jam it into the USB slot either on the front or the back. Um, it's also got an advanced sound engine and time alignment, 
and center speaker optimizer. It's kind of like a virtual center channel built into this unit. So basically what Sony tried to do is recreate the 5.1 home theater in your car. That's what they've done. It also has high and low pass filters, which I'm going to show you. You know, I'm going to sit there and goof around with it and show you. Um, now you have high pass and low pass filters. It's not that intense where you're going to have stuff like a band pass filter where you can get that crazy. But still, seven bands of EQ with some other little, you know, loudness features and these other little gimme features that they have for your sound. It's, it's good. I think I would be personally satisfied with it. So you got that. You got the power rating. Um, the bandwidth on the unit is 20 to 20,000 kilohertz. Nothing special there. Five channels of preamp outputs. The voltage on the RCAs, which is, in my opinion, pretty noteworthy, is five volts. So that's a pretty high that's a pretty high voltage RCA preamp output. That's a that's a pretty hot output. So even with a pretty lame or a un, underpowered amplifier, or say a really underpowered subamp, because those you know obviously you need a lot of power and lots of balls to really make the sucker the sucker move. Five volts is going to help it. You get a hotter input, you're going to get a much hotter output. Sony knew that and they did it. They did a good job on that. So I give them that. And as far as the illumination, you'll notice right over here. This thing, as it's going through the demo mode, is changing. It's purple. Now it's going red, orange. It's going in a rainbow pattern right now in the demo mode. So you can basically let it just kind of bug out and do whatever color it wants to do. Or you can tune it into any specific color you want that they have as a choice. Or you can customize it to whatever color you want it to be. So that's a cool feature. Um, you can tie in a steering wheel control into this unit right through the back. It's got the analog jack which of course you'd have to do the couple extra wires in your car to the uh, single wire coming out of your steering column to make it work but it's there um, you got the two USB inputs front and back the Bluetooth the satellite radio it's uh, Sirius XM compatible it's not Sirius or XM compatible it's Sirius XM that's pretty important so when you're gonna wanna get the uh, service for it make sure you buy the V200 which is the combo because since the two companies merged that's the product you want to be getting for it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to buy the wrong one and you're not going to be happy with it. This unit also has radio data system, which is the RDS feature, nothing new. So that way when you have your screen on, um, say if your station is broadcasting the channel, the artist, and the song, this would support that so long as the um, station that you're listening to supports it. So will this. background themes it has built into it which I'll touch on I'll show you all that stuff um, it also has four lines of text when you're doing the iPod and other kinds of media devices uh, also you know data encoded the CDs it has four lines of text the first one on top which is bigger and it scrolls which is very cool um, also has this weird thing called the zapping feature so that way you can actually do a 6, 15 or a 30 second clip of the song you're looking for while you're scrolling through either your iPhone or your Android phone, which is pretty nice. Uh, pairing phones, I've already done this. I'm not going to do it now because it takes a long time. Um, happens very quickly. You can learn up to four different devices to this one stereo. So if you get out and then someone else come, jumps into your car with a phone, it will automatically pair and recognize them. You can upload phone books uh, for both parties. You got that. Subwoofer controls built in, high pass filter, and the EQ. I really want to get into that because that's really important. The rest of the little stupid things about beep features and that, you can care less about. So let's get out of this demo mode. This here is going to be your home screen. Right on the bottom, you have your mirror link, which, again, like I said, there's only two phones. It's the Samsung, I believe it's the S2, Galaxy, and there's a Nokia phone, which are fully supported by this unit, and that's it. Um, why they didn't get a couple others that are probably more out there, I don't know why. It's probably because they're trying to develop the software for it or something. Um, but it'll come. Don't be discouraged. Pandora, self-explanatory. Um, AM, FM radio, nothing really exciting happening here. Um, but, you know, there it is. You could just, and, and by the way, this feature when you're touching it is very much like touching your, your actual phone. It's, it's nice. Um, it works very well. It doesn't have a lot of glitches. It doesn't drag. It, it, it's good. USB video, music, iPod, your phone, touch it right there, it's on. Um, navigation you would get through an external device such as your phone, 
Bluetooth audio straightforward. You would just use it just by using your phone or once it's on here and it's paired, you, your disc slot is right up here for your CDs and your DVDs. Is one of my favorites, Blue Slews. Just kidding. Um, rear view camera, um, I don't know if I touched on that, but once you have it set up and you connect the reverse lead on the back of the unit, it'll automatically come on. You can have the, the image, you know, as normal, or you can flip it and do a reverse image through a setting right on the screen. Auxiliary is just going to feed whatever is coming in through the composite RCAs on the, re the back of the stereo. Nothing exciting there. And if you want to do a quick toggle, they have this display button right here. So you could use this for either camera, AV1 and 2 inputs, etc. Just like that. But here's where I want to go into because this is what I find the most interesting with this radio or any radio. There's four tabs on the bottom. This here is your general settings. Um, this is how you can actually control your external navigation source such as from your phone. Um, clock, nothing really exciting there. Languages, uh, auto off, demo, beep, rotary commander, Whoa. slow it down there, Sonny. Camera input, like I was saying, oops. Where'd I go? Darn it. Rotary commander, you can make it default or reverse. I don't know why you would do that. Key illumination, like I was explaining, you can make it whatever color you like. Right now, it's highlighted as rainbow, so you're going to notice these are going to change. So, there's your green. Sky blue, dark blue, light blue, lots of choices. Um, you name it, they got it. If you wanted to make it custom, just go right in there, hit the tune button. RGB, red, green, blue, make it what you need it to be and you'll notice that the color will start changing right there in front of you. The only thing is you gotta keep tapping it. That's a little annoying. So I'm cutting back the blue. I'll make that like middle. Bring down the green. Increase the red. I'm sorry, decrease the red. Actually, I want to do that. But you, you, get the, you get the gist of it. I'm boring myself. So let's get out of here. Camera input. No more reverse. Rear camera setting. Um, output color system. Now you can do this for either either region. You got NTSC, which is what we use here in America, of course, and PAL if you're in Europe. Um, nothing else really exciting happening here. Bluetooth connection, initialize, pair the phones, what firmware you have on the unit. That would be important if you were, you know, updating this system down a road, um, either for the mirror link or some other functions. That would be very important for you to know. Um, I want to go into the audio. So, okay, now we're into the uh, seven band EQ screen. Basically, you got these presets. You see the bars jumping around. The old explode classic, but nobody likes it, especially around here. So what you do is you got your seven, you got your low frequencies, so you're starting anywhere from around 40 hertz all the way up to around 12,000, and you can tune this right into where you want it to be. Nice interface. I like it when you can actually see it, unlike some of these other manufacturers where they just give you numbers and bandwidths and numbers and crap like that, icons. I like to see bars. I like to see stuff like this. I think it would be um, better if they were enlarged, personally, but, you know, you can't have it all. But it does lay it out. 63 hertz, 160, 400. So you can see middle, upper range, you know, that's, that's good enough for me. Anybody can understand that. So you could basically go on to one of the settings that's close enough, go in there, tweak it out, hit OK, save it, and you could just go ahead and use it. There you go. Balance fader subwoofer, again, laid out. Anybody can understand that. There's your fronts, there's your rears, your sub. 
I mean, what else can you ask for? It's nice. Subwoofer right here. Oop. You got to turn it on first, I guess. But very straightforward. Easy to easy to follow along. The lines are very skinny. It's a little hard to see, especially with people like me that can't see as well as they used to. You got a listening position feature, which is basically kind of like a home theater where you take the mic and you stick it on your couch and then you time all the speakers with the white noise to make it sound like, you know, it's going to hit you all at the same time. And you can go in there and do the same thing right in this stereo. So it's kind of like a little mini digital sound processor, if you will. So that's nice. Customizable right in here. So you can just drag things, move them around to where you need them to be, so that way it's going to sound the best, especially if you have a large vehicle, SUV, or something like that. I can see myself using that. Built right in, it's free, it's nice. Rear bass enhancement, what that is, is it's kind of like um, uh, a low frequency booster for your rear fill. So your front channel will be more brighter, more midi, and then you can get more of that low end from your rear speakers. That would be really effective if you didn't have a subwoofer or if you're using a factory system at a lower volume level these would actually be very useful if you were using the external amplifier I would advise you to just go like this cut that thing off because it's gonna sound god awful you don't want that on in that case so you got that crossover filters check it out low pass filter all digital and you can adjust this and you can see it visually not that the visualization is that great but you got the high pass filter and you can adjust it. Say if you wanted to limit 50 hertz and down, 100 hertz and down, 120 hertz and lower. Block that out, say from your front stage. And then in the rear, you might want to cut on that bass enhancer. And then you might want to have a sub, you know, separately. This, this unit gives you a good way to control and customize your sound so it's going to sound good in your specific vehicle. It's not a cookie cutter, one size fits all, and it sounds good here, but not so great there. This... This unit really does shine in that respect, so I'll give it, you know, big thumbs up in that. Um, and that's pretty much the meat and potatoes. You see, it's, I don't even have to spend a long time, you know, elaborating on it because it's very straightforward. Anybody can understand that. And if you don't, for whatever reason, you still have that Bible over there. You can read and it'll show you the rest. So with that, you know, you got everything. I think I touched on most of the stuff. Um, this thing also has... Dual zone capability, so that way you could have one zone in the front, say like you're using your iPhone, you have your iPod going on, you could have your app going on, you could see like the weather, and you could feed a DVD to your rear monitor if you had it optionally connected, all with this one unit, you can control it all at one time. So that's really nice. Uh, I, I think that they're really making a good adjustment to where things are going in the future and how so many things now are app controlled. So you've seen a lot more stuff like that. It's starting to catch up just like how they did in the home. They're doing it in the car. So good job, Sony. Um, this here is the XAV610BT. So uh, I like it. 